Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Uh, real quick, I uh, just want to share this with y'all. Um, this is a documentary that I came across off on Netflix originally, but for some odd reason, I can't um, record it off of Netflix. Apparently, uh, Netflix doesn't allow you to use uh, screen recorders. So what I did was I typed the name of the documentary into Google, and it gave me a YouTube link. So the title of uh, the documentary is called Unacknowledge. Uh, this came back out in uh, 2017, and it's going into the encounters that um, the different governments of the world, primarily the United States, on how they encountered uh, UFOs, which are the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Shai, which are the angels. Um, obviously, there's going to be some uh, meat, and there's going to be some bones in this documentary. So you're going to have to filter it through the scriptures. And um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, but uh, I want to play a little bit of the documentary, probably a couple minutes. And I'm going to give you some, uh, I'm going to give some precepts to break it down. Now in this, uh, in this, uh, in this documentary, it basically goes into, um, well, not, well, it, they kind of like, they kind of tell you like the major encounters that they experience is really around their nuclear facilities where they keep their ICBMs. And whenever they encounter the angels around their facilities, a lot of strange and bizarre things happen. Like the, like the, the warheads, they get shut off. Um, the facility gets shut down. Um, people get scared. They see a lot of ships with different lights coming. And, um, yeah, things of that nature. But that's all scriptural. That goes back to uh, Revelation, the seventh chapter, man. And also Amos 9 and 8 on how the eyes of the Lord power upon the sinful kingdom and how he will not, uh, on how he will save Jacob, right? That's all a part of saving the elect. When you really look at it, um, the angels, they're set up right now to preserve the elect, to seal them. The angels, they don't care about what happens to you other nations. Um, and that's what they don't understand. They keep saying, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Well, it's because of the elect. And prophecy is set to happen in a certain time. Because when you really think about it, this place should have been destroyed a million times over already. By the rate it's going, especially on how the technology has evolved at such a fast pace. Or at such a fast rate in such a short time, right? So this and and this this Edomite, he's like a little child. He's a, he's a little child holding a big AK forty seven. He's just a, a little child holding a big gun. And you need divine intervention <laughs> to preserve this place, man, because this guy is a madman. <laughs> if it wasn't for Yahweh Shemoshai, this place would have been nuked over. 20 time fold so here I'm going to play this clip and then I'm going to get some scriptures man. looked at me and said were you guys screwing around up there and I said no sir and he said what was that and I said it looks to me like we got a UFO the idea of any explosion in space by any Earth government was not acceptable to the extraterrestrials. And that has been demonstrated over and You hear that? So you said it's been demonstrated over and over again. So every time they tried to launch warheads on these other nations, guess who intervened? The angels. That's for a reason. That's scriptural. Over How is that By the destruction of any nuclear weapon set into space. Early in the morning, I received a call from my topside security guard. He and some of the guards had been observing some strange lights flying around the launch control facility. And I said, well, you mean UFO? <laughs> I think I used that word. I didn't know what they were, but they were lights that were flying around. And I just kind of shook my head and just said, well... Call That's what you call angelic activity, man. So uh, let me get a precept here. Ezekiel, the first chapter... Because they said lights, right? And um, it's a flying roll. They go wherever the angels go. 
the chairs that you see and the chairs they come in different shapes and sizes okay and you can also get a better idea of, of that in uh, Zechariah the fifth chapter but I'm gonna uh, just just touch upon this in Ezekiel the first chapter here now uh, it says Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4 I'll move around a bit it says and I looked and behold a whirlwind came out of the north a great cloud so that cloud, that great big cloud, represents a chariot, okay? And a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it. And that's how they usually see these ships. They see when they're flying, they're 747. I'm talking about the military pilots and even ordinary pilots that um, transport civilians around the earth. They notice that there's like, there's these, these chariots that they encounter, they're always bright. They always shine. They always have some type of fire or amber type of color around it so it says and a, fire, and a fire enfolding itself and a brightness was about it and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber out of the midst of the fire and that that amber represents the lights that are around the ship those lights amber lights and by the way chariots they can they can look like balls of fire they can look like orbs they can look like they can look like just about anything they can change in size and diameter now, verse 5 says, Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And every one had four faces, and every one had four wings. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a cast foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Now, in this documentary, it also talks about how they have recovered alien bodies right different bodies now now the way they describe them it kind of it kind of relates to how it's written in the book here but like i said um, esau he's going to dramatize things and it's it, it's not going to it's going to be it's not going to really be factual there's going to be lies within it okay because in cuz cuz they don't want a lot of information coming out Right. So anyways, uh, it says, And they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Now, let me just go down here. So this is, this is the chariot part here. So I'm going to read the 15th verse. It says, Now as I beheld, beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel, upon the earth by the living creatures and his four faces so that wheel represents their ship like the flying saucer that's their tools that's their vehicles now in the article and not the article i mean the video they said when they saw a ship they know what were this is this is esau just talking he said that when it when the ship crashed they, they went inside and they noticed that it doesn't have any like controls the ship doesn't have any controls like you have to like how we have controls like a joystick or a steering wheel, you know, uh, gears and shifts. It doesn't have that. So so the angels in their ship, it doesn't have controls or like earthly controls like how you would like drive a car or a, a plane. They control it with their mind. OK. Or and or by the spirit. So it says the appearance of the wheels and their work was like was like unto the color of beryl, and they had and they four had one likeness and their appearance, and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel, a flying saucer. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. So they go wherever they go, wherever they make a move, that's where the angels are. And and you see here even though this is a dramatization in the background, you see how uh, the, f the facility in Montana on how the angels were hovering around. There are like these lights. That's because the they were going wherever the angels were. Right? So, so that's how they move. They move wherever the angels go. So that's a good uh, description there. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. 
whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. And the spirit right now for the angels to go, the spirit that the Lord has on them is to be around these facilities to hold back that destroying wind. Remember, the scripture says the spirit goeth like the wind. And real soon, um, that destroying wind is going to be a part of the spirit of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. And it's going to be let loose and it's going to wash this kingdom away, man. <laughs> so right now, the spirit is on the angels to, to make sure the elect is sealed by keeping back this destruction. <laughs> so it says they went thither was their spirit to go and the wheels were lifted up over against them for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels so there you go that explains the phenomenon behind these encounters man and that's the energy behind it and that energy is Yahweh Bashem El Shai in control and um, the chariots of the Lord that's a part of our history so don't be dismayed and per perplexed when you see these things in the sky, in the heavens, that's that's for the heathens to be dismayed and perplexed. This is a part of our history. We've seen this. We as we as the nation of Israel, we encounter this when we were coming out of, out of Egypt, when we were traveling through the wilderness. The chariots were always there with us, man, guiding us along the way. And that's of the spirit of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. So let me play this and move on. Call me if anything more important. He calls back, and this time he's very frightened. I can tell by the tone of his voice, he's, he's very shook up. And says, sir, there's a glowing red object hovering right outside the front gate. As I was relating this to him, our missiles started shutting down one by one. The Air Force did an extensive investigation of the entire incident and was not able to come up with a probable cause for the shutdowns. The, the missiles are not connected to each other. Having a fault at one site would not affect missiles at, at another location. Assuming that You see how you, 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 there is no explanation? They did a thorough investigation, man. And you know the military. They're very, very precise. And they're very far-reaching. So they, they look at every detail to the best of the, the, their ability in the flesh. They do. So so this tells you that this was this was done by a divine hand. This is divine intervention <laughs> to keep the missiles back, to keep that destroying wind at bay. Just keep that in mind. They couldn't explain it. That's divine intervention. That's the hand of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. They've always been there, but what caused this great interest in us this large incursion after 47. And I remember he thought from memory, he said, well, obviously, yet to has a bomb. Let's, here. Let's get uh, Revelation. Let's get Revelation, the seventh chapter. Revelation, chapter 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on nor on any tree. And you know, it's not just talking about just four angels. Okay, there's there's many angels are around the earth doing their job. Okay, now you may have uh, four angels in charge of uh, of each quadrant of the earth, which the four corners of the earth represent north, east, south, and west. So you have an angel, uh, uh, probably a head angel that's in charge uh, of, of each district of the earth, each four districts, each four um, directions. And guess where the four directions are? That they're, they're home to all the different governments around the, uh, the world. All the major superpowers. All of them have nuclear capabilities. So they're in charge of working on the minds of the leaders to not fire off these missiles and also to disrupt any plans that they, they have. That's their job. So it says the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth and the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on the tree nor on any tree. And uh, yes, that's nuclear destruction because once these missiles hit it's going to destroy the landmass. It's going to destroy some of the oceans. It's going to bring forth radiation. It's going to destroy humans. It's going to destroy all the elements. And everything on this earth is composed of elements. 
everything that you see on the periodic timetable. Like when you when you take chemistry, chemistry in, in, in high school or whatever, you learn about all the elements. The missiles will affect everything, man. Everything that has elements on it. Verse 2. Actually, that's all that I got from here. I'm going to play the rest and move on. One of the half stage, 132 ton ballistic device, now fully operational after an evolutionary background of more than 50 years of powered flight. Roswell was not the beginning, it was a turning point. We just dropped two bombs on a country. We had a test of that bomb a few months earlier or a few weeks. Now, what does that test go back to? That goes back to the Smith. The Lord has created the Smith. Remember, he's saying it's a test run, right? Because now they have perfected the ICBM. They've perfected it. The Lord gave them that technology. Like I said earlier, in such a short amount of time, the technology has evolved so quickly and so rapidly, man. Right? So you do need divine intervention to, 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 um, to contain order. Okay, or to keep order on the earth so the prophecies could fulfill. So let's get um, the Smith. I believe that's in the book of Isaiah, probably 54. Smith. Yeah, that's Isaiah 54. This is Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the Smith that bloweth the coals in the fire and bringeth, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And that waster is the ICBM missiles. And guess who's behind the waster? Aishashua, Esau. And what does his name mean? Wasted away is he. Aishashua. So, so in a sense, Esau, you are creating the waster to, do, to waste yourself. And to waste everybody on this earth. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shai. Now, that smith, that word smith... It goes back to um, a, a blacksmith. Right. So it's Karash, right? Or Karash. Right? Karasha, right? And uh, it says a craftsman, artisan, engraver, artificer. Graver artificers, skillful to skillful to destroy warriors, and um, that's what they they did. They're, the scientists they created um, a weapon to destroy, and it takes skill to split the atom. It takes skill. It takes ingenuity. It takes brains. It takes knowledge, man. And that also that's the reason why we call you Two Ball Cain. We call you the son of Cain because Cain is a weapon, especially Two Ball Cain. He created weapons. He was uh, an alchemist. He's all up in the lab. He's creating new things. And that's this, this so-called white man. He's, he's always in the lab, man, creating new weapons of war, or things that destroy things, man. And also, that goes back to the blessing of Esau, which you're all the same person because you come back in the same spirit anyway. You were given that blessing of the sword. So this fits your MO. Now, that's why you had things called Project Paperclip. After World War II, you had the major superpowers or the major governments of the world, the superpowers of the world at that time. They were fighting over the Nazi scientists. And those same scientists were the ones that so-called sent them to the moon. Those were the ones that created the ICBM missiles. They were the brains behind all of that. So they represent the Smith. And they are the modern day blacksmiths, the ones that create all the weapons of war. So verse 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh Bashem Shai, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord Yahweh. And um, the Lord, he's going to protect us from this up and coming destruction. Really, he's going to protect the elect. Lord willing, I'm a part of that, man. Right? Nah, that's, 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 uh, that's the Lord's choice. He'll pick whoever he wants. So, anyway, so let's play this. Weeks earlier in New Mexico, this probably was observed by these aliens somewhere, whether they were doing reconnaissance back then or how they had figured it out. 
So they came here to, to observe and try to figure out what the heck was that. Recognizance, that's a military term. They use that in the military, which, which recognize, recognizance, it goes back to scouting. You're scouting enemy territory. And um, the reason why they're using th this lingo is because they view the angels and Yahweh Bashem Shai as a threat. And, and, and yeah, they are. They're on recognizance right now because you have scriptures like the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. Amos chapter 9 verse 8. The eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom and I'm going to destroy it off the face of the earth. Briefly paraphrasing. So yes, they are an enemy and yes, they are doing recognizance. And right now, the angels, they're just watching. They're not even on the assault yet. But real soon, the Lord is going to put them on the assault. Real soon. Real soon, when the Heavenly Father gives the go-ahead. Because not even Yahweh Shai knows when He is going to come back. Now, let me get that precept. Since I, I, I said that, let me back it up, man. Because the Scriptures, the Scriptures is the proof. I'm not making this stuff up. This is in the Scriptures. Amos chapter 9, verse 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom. And who are the eyes of the Lord? The eyes of the Lord are the ministers of fire, which are the angels. They are the eyes of the Lord. They do the scout. And yes, we know the Lord. He knows what's going on. But the Lord has servants, man. He's a king. He's going to have people do things for him just for the sake of it. That's what royalty does. So, the angels, they're on the earth and they're watching what's being done in the kingdom, the sinful kingdom. Because this kingdom transgresses laws. And that's why they're watching it, because there's so much wickedness in this place. And, because, and, and, and they have to destroy it. They have to destroy it. You know how much, things, how much wicked things are, are going on here in this kingdom? You have pedophilia coming out. You have the atrocities of the so-called white man. On what he's done to the tribes, what he's doing to the earth, what he's doing to the heathen nations. You know, the wickedness of men, man. It's very sinful. So it says, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth. So the Lord said he's going to destroy it from off the face of the earth. Alright, so, so yes, the Lord, he is doing something, what you call military tactics. He's scouting it out, and then he's going to blow it up. That's what you do with the enemy. You send out scouts, you look at... You, you look at the land, you look at the, 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 the terrain, and then you uh, make your you, you get your intel, and then you make a plan, and then you destroy the place. And guess what? The scripture says it's only going to take one hour to destroy this place. One hour. One hour. Even though we know the Lord, He can destroy it in less, in less than an hour. But that's just how the Lord wants it done. With all the intel that He's going to gather... He says it's going to take one hour to destroy this place. <laughs> That's crazy. So, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith Yahweh Shem Shai. And Jacob is the twelve tribes of Israel, man, the twelve patriarchs that that um that came out of the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man, that royal line. And um. The ones of Jacob that are going to be saved is the elect and the one-third, okay? And the 144,000. That's who's going to be saved. Now, I also mentioned um, military tactics, right? Let's, let's also prove that the Lord is a man of war. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. And his name, Yahweh means he is to be. And how he would say it in the first person is, I am that I am. So he is the one. So, so if somebody's saying that I am everything, I am that I am, don't you think he's going to be a man of war too? If he is everything and he can do everything, that means he can war with his hands. So he is a man of, a man of war. He's a complete man of war. And everything that he is doing is all military tactics. It is, a, it is in a warlike fashion. So yes, you governments of the world, you heathen nations, you Edomites, you have a lot to be afraid of. Because he, 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 he has perfected the art of war. Okay, He has actually created the art of war. So you're going, you're going up against 
a formidable opponent, man. And you can't win. So let's move on. At the time of the crash, shortly after the detonation of the first atomic weapons, Roswell was the only nuclear arm squadron in the world. If you accept the multidimensional theory, it's highly likely that we've done a hell of a lot of damage. In somebody else's world, they might have even done more damage than they did here. That, according to our scriptures, that isn't a theory. That is an actual fact. Because the Lord, he, he talks about different dimensions. He talks about the fourth dimension, about in the heavens. Right? He talks about the spiritual realm. Okay? And, and the Lord, he, he, he deals with the spiritual realm. He lives there. That's why the scripture says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. So, this is just a footstool. This earth is just a footstool for the Lord. That's where he rests his feet and his toes. But where he sits and where he moves around is in the heavens, his throne, man, other dimensions. So, so that so-called theory of, of multi-dimensions, that exists. That exists. All right. The underlying theme that connects most of the Disclosure Project case files is the fact that these close encounters tend to occur near our nuclear facilities. Suggesting that these visitors are deeply concerned. So the close encounters are around the nuclear facilities. Close up, 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 and close encounters that they've seen face to face is around their their nuclear facilities. So that shows you what the angels are doing, what their what their main goal is right now. Their main focus is to hold back those destroying winds for the time being. With our hostility and the existential threat that we pose to ourselves and others once we learned to split the atom. So that was that, but um, I have something to close up with. I'm going to close up with Zechariah chapter 5. You know, you, you people should be scared, man. Because the re another reason why the Lord has the chariots all over the earth right now is, is because it's a curse onto you. And you have to pay for what you have done on this earth to his elect and to his um, his planet, man. Because you are not the right you you are not the lawful custodians of the planet Earth. So it says Zechariah chapter five verse one. Then I turned and I lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll. And that's what everybody is doing in that documentary. They're looking up into the sky. They're like, what is that? You know, they're the the, uh, the military officer is calling calling the colonel. Colonel, what is that in the sky? What do you mean? Is that a UFO? Look at it again. They look up in the sky, and the way they look up in the sky now is through their telescopes, their radar systems, and and their own two eyes, man. Their their own two fleshly eyes that the Lord has given them. And I looked, and behold, a flying roll, which is a flying saucer. Ezekiel, the first chapter. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll, the length thereof is twenty cubits, and the breadth thereof ten cubits. And um, the, the chariots, they come in different shapes and sizes. They're not going to always be that, that same size. Verse 3, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. And that's why in um, Revelation the seventh chapter, it said, the four corners of the earth. That means the whole entire earth. The whole earth. And they're there for a reason because they're not just there to hold back the destroying wind. They're really to curse, curse you people, man, to fuck shit up. Because the angels right now, they're getting busy. They're doing other things behind the scenes that we can't see and we don't know about. Uh says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth, for every one that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. Yeah, and um Yeah, and, and all these nations they have stolen. They have stolen the tribes of Israel, they have stolen the things of the Lord, took his um pleasant things from his temple, even going back all the way to the ancient world, man, till now. Especially America. Especially the so-called white man, when he has come into power, you know he has stolen the image 
of Yahweh Bashem El Shai. He's stolen the people. He has stolen the land. He has stolen the resources. He has stolen the name of the Lord. Right? So it says, For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. Yeah, and those are the ones that are not written in the book of life. You will be cut off. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. I will bring it forth, saith Yahweh of hosts, which hosts means armies. We read earlier, the Lord is a man of war. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. That's why the scriptures say also, um, he shall um, come as a thief in the night. <laughs> so the Lord is coming back as a thief in the night. And he's going to teach you how to be a thief. <laughs> anyway, the Lord's not really steal stealing. How could he steal back something which was already his in the first place anyway? So that does the way I'm saying it doesn't even really make sense because the Lord ain't really stealing anything back. He's just taking back what's his. So he's not stealing anything. Right? If you really think about it. But the reason why it's said that way is to show is really to give you an idea that you're not going to know when the Lord is going to come back. You're not going to know. He's going to catch you off guard. Enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. Yep, and he does swear falsely by the name of the Lord. You know what this devil is doing? He's basically saying, I am that I am. He's basically saying he is to be. He's saying that he is really Yahweh. When you go into um, uh, the book of Thessalonians, it says that he's going to exalt his name above Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Right? And he also put his image as the Savior. He put his, himself as Yahweh Shai. He put himself as the Heavenly Father and the saints and the angels. So, so he's swearing falsely by, by his name, man. Um, matter of fact, let me get that. Uh, exalteth, right? This is Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two and four, who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called the Most High, or that is worship, so that he as the Most High. Or, I mean, so that so that he as God or a power sitteth in the temple of the Most High, showing himself that he is the Most High. That's right. So he's swearing falsely on the name of the Lord, and he has to pay for that. He has to pay for that. That's why, um, you know, his satellites that he has up in outer space. What does he call it? He calls it God's eye. Right. He calls it God's eye, because he can see. See where you are right now. He can see you from outer space. <laughs> you know, by, by the push of a button on a laptop. He can see you. He calls that God's eye. So, you know, he, he's, he's, um, he, he's swearing on the name of the Lord falsely. It's really blasphemy. By my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. That's right. Then the angel talked with me, went forth and said unto me, Lift up now thine eyes and see what is that goeth forth. And I said, What is it? And he and he said, This is an ephod that goeth forth. He said, Moreover, this is their resemblance through all the earth. So that's all that I got right now. You know, I hope this lesson was edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim El Shai. And uh, thank you, Thawada Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, for allowing me to do this lesson. Also, I just want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Kwam Yash Allah, Bad Ba, Shalom.